So, hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to present um, the integration between WITS and uh, MISP. So, yeah, I will explain what WITS is in a couple of slides. So, this is my Twitter and GitHub uh, handle if you want to check my projects, and this is the, the project's um, GitHub as well. Okay, so who am I? Uh, I'm freelance uh, security um, consultant, uh, mainly working uh, in Luxembourg uh, for my own uh, company. And um, yes, I'm uh, mainly doing incident response, uh, everything related to digital forensics and uh, malware-oriented uh, digital forensics and malware analysis as well, as well. So everything related to incident response, let's say. And I'm also developing some uh, open source uh, projects, mainly in Go, uh, that you will find on my GitHub, but also C and Python uh, sometimes. So that's it for my introduction. So you have probably never heard about this tool. Uh, so I will uh, present it quickly. So it stands for uh, Windows Host uh, IDS, uh, even though that now it's a little bit more than just an IDS. And yeah, to be uh, more precise, it's, it combines the detection capabilities of an IDS with some incident response uh, uh, capabilities as well. So just for your information, um, it strongly relies on uh, Microsoft Sysman. So basically we can say it can be, yeah, let's say it has less features if we don't use Sysman. And uh, these are the main features. Um, so it can correlate uh, the logs on the host, uh, which is often done uh, offline, I mean, in common scenarios where we have a SIM and so on. This is done on host. Uh, it can also detect in real time suspicious events, so either from raw uh, source logs or from the correlated logs. And uh, the interesting part uh, is it can react to the alerts. React means that it can dump the files, process, or registry. As an example, if you see like a process that has done something malicious, it can dump the file created, for instance, the process itself, the memory, and the executable. So, and all this information uh, can be sent to a central point. Okay, um, so this is a little bit uh, a small uh, drawing to explain you how uh, it's designed. So basically it's built on top of the Windows events, uh, so you can listen to the Windows uh, event channel. It can be any channel you want, basically, and it's uh, fully configurable by the, um, by the user. Just Yeah, sorry, I missed one slide. <laughs> uh, um, this is because of the remote. <laughs> so why uh, why did I want to 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 implement this tool? So that a lot of people cannot afford expensive solutions like SIM, EDR, or whatever. So and I would like those people to have something to hack with. So so that they can basically craft the detection rules that they want and control them uh, from A to Z. I want a scalable solution um, that is easy to manage, easy to deploy. And I want also something that is easily pluggable with all the other open source uh, software that we can find today. So MISP is an, an example. I don't know, Dehive is another. So yes, this is the goal of this project, and the through the let's say the um, uh, ho how the evidence collection, I also want the analyst to save uh, to save their time because as an as an analyst, I'm often let's say frustrated by the time between the detection and the time of the collection of the evidence can take ages. So that's why I wanted, I wanted something almost in real time. Mm -hmm. 
So, how it works. So, you can listen on any Windows channel, as I say. And then those events uh, goes to the hook engine. The hook engine is uh, the first pre-detection hook, I call, is to uh, do the correlation. So it can take several events and correlate them uh, to create an uh, enriched event. And then those events are pushed to the gene engine. And this engine is basically the guy who is responsible of detecting uh, something, detecting a suspicious event, and then transform this event into an alert. And the alerts are then sent to the post-detection hook, which reacts to the alert by dumping file process or re the registries. So this is a quick example of enrichment. So if you are familiar with this one, this is an original uh, process create event. And this is uh, what we can uh, enrich the event with. So I didn't copy it the same fields from uh, one column to the other. So this is what with is happening appending to the event. So you can get the full uh, list of ancestors to this uh, process. You can get the image size, uh, the parent integrity level. It's uh, useful for uh, privilege escalation detection, for instance, and some other fields. Uh, another interesting one is this one. So it can list the, gives you the, um, the list of the services associated to this process especially interesting for SVC host processes. Uh, so what's Gene? Because uh, probably uh, you have never heard about it uh, either. So this is the detection engine uh, inside width. And uh, this is basically the origin of uh, everything because I started by this project and I wanted to uh, design a tool um, to uh, match um, IOCs inside Windows logs because I was always doing this by hand uh, when I was doing my analysis. So I wanted a generic tool so that everyone can craft the rule, feed it to the tool, and just report the suspicious events. So this can be used offline, for instance, and you can use it in your forensics uh, analysis as well. And this is packaged inside uh, WITS so that it can process uh, the, the logs in real time. So a rule example. Um, these are two different rules, just um, to show you. So this is uh, a rule matching uh, PowerShell process, uh, taking some inputs in uh, STD in. So rule name, a tag, the event ID it applies to. So event ID one, process create of uh, the Sysman channel, the criticality of the alert, and some metadata I won't go into the details. And this is the important part. So these are variables, $RPS and $RARG. And this is uh, basically uh, the match. So it means I will match the image part of the Im Im event using the operator rejects. So it's, it expects uh, rejects after, after. And this is the rejects it has to match uh, against so that this variable is set to true. And likewise for this one. So, and from the matches and the variable of the matches, you can create the conditions or here, if PS and ARG are met, you say that it will trigger this alert, so PowerShell STDN. So if you have PowerShell process plus this uh, rejects matching the command line. Likewise for uh, this is this uh, suspicious LSAS uh, access, so to detect uh, Mimikatz normally. Uh, here we see that we can also integrate the um, information about the attack metrics, and this will be reported in the alert as well. And we see another operator, which is uh, like a flag operator, which checks for um, read access to the 
to the process. So, yeah, there, there are several things to do about this format, to, to say about this format. So if you really want to, to dive into, you can look at the documentation. I won't uh, explain more about this. So yeah, we are the MISP summit, right? So when do I talk about MISP? Um, I just recently uh, integrated uh, MISP inside uh, this uh, this width um, to to benefit to benefit from the MISP IOCs uh, inside this uh, this IDS, let's say. So. I had several challenges to, to, to face. So the performance, because uh, we have a lot of IOCs and I don't want my, uh, my ideas to be slow because of the high number of IOCs. I want it scalable. So I don't want, uh, the increasing number of IOCs to, uh, slow down the, um, the IDS. And I want it to be, uh, flexible. A flexible means I want sometimes to match a subpart of uh, a field and not the full uh, field. I will explain this uh, later. And also the case uh, insensitivity uh, that we have to face uh, mainly for uh, registered keys and path. Uh, so this has been uh, mainly uh, implemented uh, inside Gene. So again, the the, um, the format definition of uh, the rules. So this is uh, an example of a, of a rule um, which is made to to match again the query name event of uh, a, que a DNS query event uh, from Sysmon. Uh, so this is an example of query name event. Uh, qu um, DNS query event. And, uh, this basically says, uh, this variable will extract, uh, this regex. So only the TLD plus, uh, plus domain part of, uh, this field, the query name field, and we'll check it against the MISP uh, container. So a MISP container is basically a set data structure containing all the IOCs uh, present uh, in MISP. And same for uh, subdomain and sub-subdomain. And for instance, this alert will be reported if uh, any of these is met. So yes, what's needed to be done inside uh, WITS since yeah, main, mainly it has been implemented in Gene. It has to be um, integrated with the central manager of uh, WITS. Uh, it has, uh, yeah, I had to define a specific policy also to periodically pull uh, the IOCs uh, from MISP. I had to make a choice on the IOCs, uh, so I decided to take for the moment uh, only the one uh, with the IDS flag and belonging to those categories. So basically cri cryptographic hashes and hostname and domain. So why I didn't take the registry keys and the file name? The registry keys is a bit tricky because you can have a variable part inside. So for instance, the seed of the, the, the user. So yes, it needs some tweaking, let's say, to make it uh, fully uh, compliant with what uh, we see in Sysman. And uh, the file name, I didn't put the priority on this because I don't think it's a really strong IOC, uh, meaning that we can we can have a lot of uh, false positive with this. So anyway, supporting new IOC types is just a matter of adding one line of code, and uh, I could theoretically even put it in a config file. So it's not a big deal. So if I want to to add some. No problem, and the integration is is now on the on the GitHub, so it's the latest release from today. So if you want to to check it out, yeah. Ah, small demo.
I cheated a bit. I did a video not to suffer from the video effect and so that I can comment in the same time. So we don't see a lot, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, I, I will put this uh, on a GitHub. So here we see the manager running. Uh, here it's a VM with Windows 10 running. Uh, with, with running on it. And here I'm just issuing a VGET on a malicious uh, domain uh, from uh, found in uh, MISP. And here we see coming in the dumped information. I'm sorry, we, we don't see, we don't see anything. Uh, so here I will print uh, the event associated to the, to the alert. So we see it's a suspicious domain. And uh, yes, we see it. And now we have to wait a little bit that the process is done because uh, there is um, there is a time between the, the dump is pushed to the to the manager. It's a policy not to load the network uh, everything at a time. So we have to wait a few seconds. And uh, yes. So we see the event and also uh, it should uh, have logged the, um, the SHA of the, the, the malicious process issuing the, the, uh, the query. Uh, I didn't remember it was so slow. So now the dump arrived. So it's a full mem not a full memory dump, but a process memory dump of uh, the PowerShell process. So here we see that it's exactly the same PID as here. So I pipe it to file. We see that it's a dump, a Windows dump file. And uh, now I'm just uh, making a string on it just to see the, to show that we can see exactly the same uh, command line I entered on the infected machine, the simulated infected machine. So, and that's it. Yes. Yeah, so this will be on a, on a GitHub. So if you, if you want to, if you want to check it, I'm sorry, we don't see. Yes, basically. So if you have questions about this. Yes. So I have a few ones. Um, you showed your um, uh, gene uh, file format. I was wondering, when I saw gene, uh, the first thing that popped in my head was sigma. Uh, because it, it, it looks the same, but it is different. Uh, I recognize some structures, but also there were some different. I was wondering if, if, if you've already looked into maybe gluing it together. That might be cool. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, you can, on the um, gene uh, GitHub repository, I have a script to convert uh, gene to uh, sigma to gene. So... Uh, but again, it's a long discussion because there is no one-to-one -one match between the two formats. So this is something I automated, but this is something that has to be reviewed uh, in the end by the the person who converted it because it, there is no guarantee that it will not raise false positives and so on. The reason is that Sigma is, uh, let's say, based on text-based text -based search, and this is mainly uh, using regex. So it has to be translated from the two, and yes, it's I guess it's easy to to find bugs in this uh, this conversion. So it it needs to be checked, but let's say it can be used at least to generate the skeleton of the rule. Over the other, uh, I have a, a so I'm um, I'm not sure to understand the whole link on how you glue into the the APIs. I was wondering, um, uh, are there any risks of incompatibility issues with Windows updates and and newer versions which might cause crashes of the system, or is that depending on how you hook, uh, is that totally not an issue? Because it's out of interest of like convincing people to use it. So there is nothing done at the kernel level or uh, let's say really low level stuff. Uh, it's uh, only listening on the Windows events. And the, let's say the hooking is just a way to say when I see this event, 
I will, uh, let's say, take this information from this event. I store it inside my, my program in a, in a structure. And then when you see another event, you just enrich this, this event with the data you have seen in the other event. So that's the only thing. And uh, it's implemented as a Windows service. So it's everything user land, nothing low level. So for me, there is no incompa incompatibility issues. Any other question? Okay, so if no question, I'm done. So uh, just so you know, I'm also giving a training about this on Thursday. Uh, so here I had to go really, really quickly on several aspects. Uh, and I will, I will really go more into detail uh, on Thursday. It's three hour workshop. So feel free to come if, uh, if you, if you want to know more about it. So thank you guys.